Good morning, friends, wherever you are, and welcome to today's Cichlids and Coffee. And I feel like I need to call it something else because we have so much more going on now than, uh, than Cichlids. But um, for now, let's leave it as Cichlids and Coffee. And I hope you're having a cup of coffee wherever you are. I'm having mine out of my uh, channel cup. Very good. <laughs> so, let's see. Hey, James Green, Lander Davis, Oink Master Supreme Forever. Hello. Fish Ranch, Christian Panachetti. I hope I pronounced that right. Hey, Cat Sailor. Jenny, Jenny Delgado is here. Amber Key, oh my goodness. Some of the best people around are already here. Cat Sailor, John. Hey, John, one of my moderators. Thank you for being here, John. We're very appreciated. And um, big shout out to moderators who help uh, help keep things moving smoothly and uh, keep it all keep it all family friendly. Z Zip is here, and so is R Baglio. Hello, R Baglio, and Michael Michael Phillips. And Eric Miranda is here. I hope it's an interesting subject, Michael. You know, I put a subject out there and uh, start to talk about it and uh, see where it goes. So let's see. I hope it's interesting. You you, you tell me. Raul Sancho, hey, Raul. And uh, Chill, Chill Vibez. <laughs> Great name, Chill Vibez. Love that. And Shannon King. Hey, Jerry. Glad you're here, buddy. Check out Jerry's Fish Room on YouTube. Brian P. is here. GV Aquariums Australia. Good day to you, mate. Peas and Haps forever. Hello, Peas and Haps. Shannon King. Hey, Joe. Joe's here. Joe Provenzano. And let's see. Bruce Leroy is here. And just a lot of good folk. Natalie C., good afternoon to you. It's tea time in London. Hey, Natalie C., say hi to my son and future daughter-in-law. They are in London today. And he was uh, he was skiing in France. I'm so jealous. And uh, you always hope your kids uh, you always hope your kids do better than you. I didn't think they would do this much better. <laughs> hey, Brian P. and Marcus McClung. Good morning to you. And let me go ahead and get uh, get things rolling here, because otherwise I'll just be saying hi for two hours here which I don't mind, but uh, let's go ahead and start the live stream officially. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button, the bell, thumbs up, let YouTube know that something good is going on here. I think we're like this close to 43,000 or 44,000. I think we're just like... Eh, like under like under a hundred so uh definitely hit that sub button and uh big shout out big shout out to the channel sponsor which is the uh, cichlid shack in tempe arizona going through a massive expansion out there remodel and adding all these uh high-tech water change systems and tubs and it's exciting i'm going to go there i'm going to film it all for you folks and show it to you don't forget to use shack attack 10 for fish uh, for uh, products, products and food, including um, some of the extreme food, which I love. He also carries Piscine Energetics, by the way, another great food. And uh, use Shack Attack 15 for 15% 15 off on fish orders over $100, which is real easy to do once you see the fish he has there. And that doesn't count shipping, of course. The shipping is simply charged directly to you, whatever he pays, or he just sets it up so that you pay for it when you get it. He doesn't make any money on that shipping. He does work on getting it to you as fast as possible, airport to airport. So um, for those of you who'd like to support the channel, consider becoming a Patreon member and using the Amazon link to buy your things at Amazon, whether you buy things from my store or anywhere on Amazon. You do, get, uh, you do give a credit to the uh, channel by using the link. And if you want T-shirts, cups, mugs, hoodies, and things like that, go to the Teespring store. Use Livestream for a 10% discount. 
And that pays the bills. <laughs> Big shout out, by the way, big shout out to um, Patreon members. We've had some recent new ones, and you can see here the list is growing. And James Green, Brian Hahn, Drew, and Gene, and Jenny, all new Patreons. And you folks are helping to keep the channel going and uh, funding things like my trip to Arizona to film The Sickle Check. And also, uh, of course, Super Chats also help. For those of you who don't know what Super Chats are, there's something you can do during the live stream. So uh, thank you to my uh, Patreon members and for being part of the Garage Gang, helping to build out the garage. All right, no more commercials. Hey, look at that. I have a beta cam. Let's see, where's Mr. Mustard? He was in his cave, and uh, there he is. Because he's sort of cut off here on the edge, so I thought I'd set up a little beta cam. And there he is. So, really like that betta. Didn't think I liked bettas that much. And uh, fell in love with this one over at the uh, Aquatic Critter. And uh, brought him home. And then I went into that whole adventure of trying to set up a betta tank with this tank here. And a few folks have been following my channel. You know that I think I have finally resolved the issues in that tank. And uh, by using... A suggestion by someone who calls themselves boss on YouTube simple 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 solution sometimes the most obvious simple solutions are right in front of you and you don't see them hey Denny good to see you my friend Mallory Quinn is here hey Mallory Quinn <laughs> yes Mallory Quinn is my daughter Maybe she'll come with me to Arizona and help me film that uh, Tempe, Arizona setup. Scott's Aquatics is here. Hello, Scott's Aquatics. And Eric Miranda, Natalie C. Okay, Robert Egan. All right. Love the fact that all you folks spend a little time with me on Saturday. And um, did you folks uh, watch that video this morning? I tried something different. Instead of releasing a video on Sunday, I figured we'd give everybody Sunday off. And uh, I released the sun, what would normally be the Sunday video this morning at 7 a.m. Central. And uh, what do you folks think about that? Is it, is it too much? Too much, Ben? Uh, in one day? Or, uh, or would, would, would you prefer to have the live stream Saturday and the video Sunday? Let me know what you think. And that video was a walkthrough of my local fish store comparing it to Petco. And uh, I was really surprised, really, really surprised. And you'll see in the video, there's, um, there's just a, I really thought there, that there would be bigger uh, differences. There were on a couple products. On tanks, uh, the Aquion tanks, uh, Petco had a sale going on, so they really beat the pants off of uh, the local fish store. But in other products, uh, it was real, real close. And then when you add in um, selection and service and health of the fish, it kind of became a no-brainer for me. But you'll see in the video, you're going to see a lot of cool fish, and you're going to see side-by-side -side comparisons of products, substrates, um, aquariums, filters. And so let me know what you think about that video. It uh, And it, it, it dropped this morning at... At seven at seven a.m. Chill says the more the merrier. Okay, <laughs> I'd get you more if I could, but you know I'm pretty. Uh, I'm doing all I can here, <laughs> one man show. But my uh, daughter, by the way, while I have her, while I have her on the line, my daughter is into um, into branding and and. Uh, the development of certain brands and the creation of art for those brands. And so she's actually going to be doing a little bit of a campaign for me. And I'm very, very excited, very excited about that. So that's my youngest, Mallory. I think some of you have seen her from time to time and uh, just a total sweetheart. So um, how's the... Uh, how's the... How's the audio and the video? Is it good? 
is do we have good quality on the broadcast? Because I got a funny message from YouTube. Let me know what the audio quality and the video quality is. So <clears throat> today's topic is um, I took some, I, I put some notes, you know me and my notes, right? You know, I'm always, <laughs> I'm always putting notes together because you know, I started this because I'd, I'd go back and watch one of my videos, especially the ones that have like five tips or 10 tips or things like that. And I'd go back and, and watch the video and go, wait a minute, uh, I forgot, blah, blah, blah. And, and it was like a key point or something. And so I said, okay, that's it. I'm going to start, instead of just doing it, off the cuff and ad libbing, I'm going to go ahead and start uh, start doing uh, start doing notes. So, so these are today's today's topic are the the things that I've learned starting from scratch. And if you saw the thumbnail, uh, this this was um, it, it was trashed. This was trashed. The floors were covered in oil. Walls were all scuffed. There was junk that was left behind. It was. It was just, it was just a mess. And uh, so we had the floors painted with a special uh, uh, paint that is really, really rugged. And uh, we had the walls painted, the, the backdrop, and, and, and little by little, little by little, it's been coming together. Now, one of the reasons I thought about this topic was because tomorrow, uh, Glass Cages is going to deliver the, the stand. They're, they've actually got the stand made. They custom made one because the original original stand had something that we didn't like. And so uh, Joe, one of the uh, uh, co-owners of Glass Cages, is going to be bringing over, bringing over the stand. And uh, so it just got me thinking, you know, all the, all the changes and all the steps that were taken and, uh, and probably – if I had to classify the lessons, I think the first the first one, and thank you vibes for that for the audio and Raul and 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 uh, Canuck Aqua Tropics, thank you, thank you for the uh, letting me know. And Darren Lockhart, thank you for that. All of you that gave me the thumbs up message on audio and video. So uh, my first, probably the first lesson is uh, for me was was not to not to rush not to rush. And, and I've, I've made the mistake of, of, uh, of rushing. I've made the mistake of rushing and I've paid the, paid the price, uh, whether it was adding fish, uh, too soon, uh, adding too many fish too fast, maybe not letting a tank really mature. There's something about a tank that has reached a point of, of sort of biological stability like these tanks here the 29 gallon that you, you you can barely see back there that 29 gallon tank has reached a point now where i feel like i could go and 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 buy you know 10 10 ember tetras from a local breeder that i trust drop them right in and it would be fine they they the tank is of course i probably want to quarantine them but but after quarantine, I could drop them in, and they would be fine. They would, they would do great. No worries. Uh, when I first set that tank up, it, it was a, a little, like I was sort of challenging, challenging the level of beneficial bacteria. And, um, but now I think enough of it has taken hold in the substrate, on the decor, and it's a mature tank. Same thing for this one here, this tank here. This has become a... A, a very, very, very stable setup. And it didn't, and it went through, as, as a, lot, a lot of you know, it did go through a severe hiccup where I lost, where I lost some very, very um, beautiful fish, including my Starry Night, uh, Red Spotted Severum, one of my Geos, one of my Hecalis. I mean, it, it, it was a, a bit of a devastating situation from something I did with the filtration. I, I messed with too much and the tank uh, hiccuped. And by hiccup, what I mean is, it it's it sort of jump started, it, it jump started the uh, the cycle, 
the nitrogen cycle gave me a little bit of an of, of an ammonia spike and the fish they just couldn't take it and the bacteria couldn't keep up and i and i had a loss so um so this tank now i think is uh with a deep substrate all the bacteria living in here which i don't mess with uh this tank is not is not vacuumed i've never i've never put a a, a siphon uh tube i've never put a siphon tube into this tank and um uh, this is very forgiving, this, this substrate. doesn't show anything, but it stays very, very clean. And, uh, and there isn't really a lot of water. Mo you see the plants in there? There isn't a lot of water movement. So it's just a combination of a very stable setup, uh, the fish constantly stirring things around, the geos. And I've got two big marine land um, Emperor 400s on the back, so there is a lot of filtration going on. I'm very good about swapping out the media on a regular basis when you know as soon as, when it's needed. So really, uh, not rushing and um, letting things take longer. I, 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 when I was doing the plumbing, when I was doing the plumbing for the 220, and I'll show you the 220. It's just it's looking really good. The fish are looking really great in there. I'll give, you, I'll, I'll give you a peek of it here as we go along. But um, when I was setting up the 220, there was something that happened in the plumbing, which, which for those of you who have ever done plumbing for a sump or any kind of um, a PVC type plumbing, you know that you, 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 treat, you, know, you, you, you treat the pipe and, uh, with a special adhesive and then you, you push the parts together. Well, I had a, a part that went into a union, what's called a union. And uh, later on, I noticed that I hadn't pushed it all the way, all the way in. It had only gone, it was short by about a half inch. The other, th the other two unions were all the way. And it was going to put off the project by a few days. I was this close to winking at it and just saying, you know what? It's going to hold. That's lots of area with adhesive, and it probably would have held. But I said, no, I'm going to go ahead. And so I cut the pipe and sacrificed the union. You, you, you can't reuse the union once it's been glued like that. And uh, went ahead and bought a new, new, new union. That took a day or two to get to me, and then another couple of days for the gluing and everything else for the drying. And, and, uh, and I'm so glad I did it. Because I'm just, I don't have that worry. I don't have that anxiety that it could possibly uh, come loose. So um, at any rate, just, just patience and, 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 and not rushing and taking my time. And imagine if I had just put the beta immediately into this, into this tank right here. If I had just put the beta in there. Um, I, I'm almost positive, almost positive he'd be dead right now. There, there, I'm almost sure he'd be dead. If not from um, getting caught in that filter trap in the back, maybe by having a tank that isn't quite mature. This tank now, I think, is very mature. It's got a couple uh, cherry barbs. Maybe they'll show up. They like to hang out underneath the uh, 3D background. One of them's out right now. He might be off camera, though. And uh, got a big snail in there named Gary, big mystery snail. And it looks like I imported uh, a little uh, pagoda snail in one of the plants I bought. Oh, yeah, there are the both, both of the embers, or rather both of the cherry barbs are out. But it looks like I imported a little, a little snail, a pagoda snail. Now, for those of you who know snails, is a pagoda snail... That's not going to breed with my mystery snail, is it? I, I intentionally only had one snail because I didn't want to be overrun by snails. If you know snails, do s snails only breed with their own kind? Is that the case? I hope so. I don't want to have a bunch of... Oh, go to mystery snails. So, uh, at any rate, yes. Uh, being patient and then really being able to work out all of the issues on this on this horizon tank and finally getting it to where I, I feel comfortable like I could put like I could put uh, Mr. Mustard in there. That's uh I think that's 
that has a lot of peace of mind, a lot of value in peace of mind. And <clears throat> Jeff Hester, be careful with that stand tomorrow too. I bet it isn't light either. Ditto to others. Can't have too many videos. Thank you. Yes, yes. He, he brings a special cart. It comes out of the van, goes onto the rolling cart, and then we very carefully put it. I mean, it's, it's four up. The, the aquarium, it's seven feet, seven feet across. And it has big panels on the front. So we can take off the panels. That'll reduce the weight. The panels are very heavy. We'll take the, the, the three big panels off the front and then, you know, guide it into as close as where I think I'm going to want it, which is like right in front of me, right here. And then we'll put the panels on, and then I've got to work on the leveling of it because this, this garage slopes downward towards the opening. So I've got to level the back. I've got some pieces of very heavy-duty uh, tile that um, I'm using on the other tanks and they they haven't cracked they're very strong and I'm going to use those to level uh, to level the tank which I suspect is only going to be lifting the back by about a half inch I lift the back by about a half inch and then I've got a couple levels in here a couple big levels and I'll level it from side to side front to back side to side and then when I'm positive it's level um, then I'll start doing other work I've got to cut out the back for the sump, I've got to um, call the electrician here to add additional sockets and more amps because um, we're going to be running into a lot of electrical, a lot of electrical draw. And that's um, uh, takes me to point number two. So point number one was don't rush, and point number two is um, don't be afraid to uh, get over your head and. And I tell you, there's uh, there's something about necessity, and like having to learn something, and and learning it. You know, I mean, like when you when you know you've got to, you, I've got to learn about electricity, so that I don't have blackouts, so I don't flip switches. I've got to learn about uh, loads and amps. I've got to learn about, uh, you know, I had to learn more about plumbing. I had to use equipment that I hadn't used before to cut out the back of of stands, and um, I got into a DIY sump, right? Just an idea I had about a sump. I just decided, okay, you know what? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna make a sump on my own, and uh, you know, I just jumped into these things, and then I jumped into other kinds of fish, you know, fish that uh, I was not familiar with. I've already made a few mistakes. In, in mixing certain fish. So, uh, but I tell you, it's been a lot of fun. And probably the, the biggest growth I've had since moving here has been jumping into the areas that I, I was um, either a little bit afraid to get into or didn't know about. And that's, you know, you've heard that saying about how the the biggest adventures on the other side of your greatest fear. You know, it was sort of that kind of a thing. It's like, okay, I don't know. I don't know about electricity. I don't know about plumbing that much. I don't know about, you know, gluing down baffles in an aquarium to make a sump. I don't know about those things. I've never done them before. But um, jump in. Just jump in. <laughs> yeah. And if you make a mistake, you know, take your time. And if you make a mistake, like I did, I made several mistakes along the way, uh, you can go ahead and, and uh, scrap it and start over again. And, and that, that did happen with a couple of things I did. So I guess number one and number two kind of tie into each other. You know, don't, don't be afraid uh, to jump into stuff. Don't rush it, especially if you're on uncertain territory, right? I also started getting into more of a different... And you know, don't be afraid to be different. Don't be afraid to do something different. I've moved away from expensive filter media. I've gone into deep substrates and sponges as a primary, as a primary form of filtration and and uh, you know places for beneficial bacteria. I've gone mostly to sponges and deep substrates. 
And I'll tell you in the beginning, in the beginning, I, you know, I was, I'm going to try it out. You know, let's, let's, let's see. Now it's, it's, it's coming to fruition. The tanks are, are in a very strong level of stability. Nitrates are not really an issue. And, uh, I think it, it's, you know, it takes a little, you can't just put five inches of substrate and say, okay, good. I've got a great tank. Maybe throw in a little Fritz Zyme and go, okay, we're good to go. Uh, I think it took probably four or five months, uh, maybe six months, to really get a colony of bacteria in that substrate that that I feel is what you would call um, stable or mature. And uh, so, again, we're, we're kind of back to don't rush. We're kind of back to not being afraid to try something different. You know, there's um, father fish out there. There's there's a lot of there's a lot of folks out there that talk about this this idea of of using a very stable area like substrate, which doesn't get stirred around, and and uh, allowing allowing it to to sit and grow beneficial bacteria and not be killing everything off when you're um, when you're servicing your filters because that's the only place you have beneficial bacteria. Now, let, let's say, let's say that 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 I had bare bottom tanks and canister filters that were full of uh, uh, biohome or matrix or something like that. Right? Uh, then, yeah, yeah, that would be a whole different direction, whole different direction. And uh, but that's not what I have. I have deep sand and uh in all the tanks and what i think is a a maturing substrate a maturing ba uh, bacteria colony in a deep substrate now i think i missed a, a super chat here i am sick lid sick kid but maybe sick lid <laughs> How big was your Taiwan reef before it started showing color? Because I bought an adult male, it was colored up right when I got him. So, and he was four inches, five inches when I got him. And he hasn't grown, he's probably maybe around five inches now, maybe four and a half, five inches. He's not a big fish. And, uh, Hasn't been growing like the other fish. And I'll show them to you in a little bit, but I'll tell you who's who's actually surprising me is that the um, Malawi trout has just blown up. He's just, he looks massive. The Strigatus looks massive. I thought the, the Venusis was going to outgrow everybody, but the trout and the Strigatus, the Kawingi, and uh, the Bucochromus, uh, the Bucochromus is, is, uh, Also showing a lot of growth. The Fusco is growing slow compared to what I thought it would do. But you know, some of these slow, slow, grow, slow growers, they get massive. They get massive. The um, Autopharynx tetrastigma is a beast. He's just gotten so big. I mean, he's like he's like you know, big as my bigger than my hand, and he nobody messes with him. Nobody messes with him. Even the living stone eye stays clear of him. So it's pretty interesting to have a, a such a beautiful fish as a uh, as a tank boss. All right, so the next point was uh, was my attitude about setbacks and failures. Uh, you know, I had some setbacks. You know, I had some failures along the way here in setting up this fish room. And uh, two things. Uh, Getting the takeaway, there's a takeaway, right? Like getting what that takeaway was, learning from it, and and also being willing, being willing to share, to share that with you. I mean, let me move this table here. It's on the way. These are not bodily noises. <laughs> so getting, uh, having this, having... Uh, 
because look, I, I'm I'm in a I'm in a bit of a glass house. I'm sort of in an aquarium, and you're 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 watching this aquarium, <laughs> and so everything that happens here is is public knowledge, and so really having that willingness to go, all right, okay, here's what happened. Here's what I learned. Maybe you're not going to do it. And one of the things I started doing more here than, than, than back in California where my tanks were very mature is um, conditioning, conditioning my tank more regularly after uh, certain maintenances like, 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 um, uh, swapping out a couple of the filter cartridges in in one of the um, Marineland Emperor 400 hang on back filters, swap those out because it started to look like it was clogged. Right, it has those channels in the middle. It tells you when it needs to be, it tells you when it needs to be uh, swapped out because the channels start to show water water flow. When those channels should be dry, and if they're not dry, you, your media is getting blocked. So it's time to swap out. So you, usually I would just swap that media out, right? And um, what I do now is I swap it out and I condition the tank. So I've become like really conservative in, what, in, in how I approach this stuff. Anything that I do is, you know, I move all the decor around and uh, take out some plants because they're a little bit dark and I want to give them a, a peroxide or a bleach treatment. I put in new plants and new decor. I treat the tank. You know, so I've become like very, very conservative on that. So some of the things I've learned here by these setbacks, I become more aware of those many, many cycles that can occur, how you can sort of upset the balance of the tank and and get bacteria trying to catch up. And when it's trying to catch up, you're gonna have ammonia. And ammonia is devastating. Nitrite is devastating. Nitrates, not so much. You can, with some fish, you can get into very high levels of nitrate. Not the levels I hear some people tossing around. Whoa, 1,000, 2,000, 800. Uh, you know, some of those studies that show those levels of nitrate as being safe are coming from fish farms. And fish farms, uh, like agriculture, that will tell you that certain pesticides are safe. Uh, you know, because, you know, the pesticide company is paying for the study. So, <laughs> so I don't think that, you know, 100, 200, 300 nitrates, eh, I'd bring them down. I'd start to work on bring them down. But uh, definitely ammonia and nitrite, don't mess around with those two. Those are killers for sure. So um, let's see here. Setbacks and failures, sharing them with you, and uh, I had patience, but you know, patience is a lot like 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 don't ru like like never rush, you know. And and um, but I tell you, when you when you start with with nothing, a clean slate, you've got certain considerations like your budget. What's your budget? How much do you want to spend? What size of tank are you going to need? I mean, yeah, you can run out and get a small tank, but are you going to outgrow that in three or four months? What's the point, right? Unless you have a second tank that's larger and is being set up in the meantime, and that first tank is turned into a hospital or a quarantine tank. You know, I mean, you got to you got to like plan it out, like like plan it out. And I've and I'm learning more and more the importance of 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 creating a budget. Sticking to the budget, uh, and um, you know, thinking, thinking in terms of not just that fish that I see. That oh man, I want that fish. I kind of did that with the betta. I'll, I'll admit, I'll admit, I did that with the betta. I saw the betta. And I said, okay, mustard gas betta. Love the combination of uh, orangey yellow. Uh, mustard and blue, that combination together. I just love that color combination in a fish. And um, love at first sight. Bag them up. And then when I get home, I'm like, okay, now what, what, what do I do with this fish? 
Yeah, one fish, okay? You know, but when you're looking at a big project, right? A fish room with uh, multiple tanks. And are you going to breed? If you're going to breed fish, you, you better have a rack with a whole bunch of little tanks that are all set up to put fry in and, uh, and, and raise them out. And you're going to be raising different generations of fish. So you're going to have to have definitely different tanks because you, the one first group got too big now and they'll eat that second group. So you got to like put the second group in a different tank. And so all these different factors, right? And uh, so anyway, planning and, uh, and I, I, you know, I've been kind of an impromptu kind of guy and planning was never my, my strong suit necessarily. Uh, my wife gets on me about using my calendar more. <laughs> But I've been forced. I've been forced to to plan and and to and to put things on calendars and 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 prepare and get and and, and things of that nature and look at things like plumbing, water sources, uh, electrical capacity, and uh, and really think that way when you're setting up this room and uh, heating and cooling. You didn't really think about it much in California. I mean, you've got a, an air conditioner that you run the summer in the winter, you run the heater. I mean, it's never really drastic here in, in Tennessee. You do get into temperature ranges that will kill, uh, or certainly make your fish extremely uncomfortable if you don't have the proper heating and cooling. And this garage was not, was not ducked. It wasn't vented. So between leaving that door up there open to the house and and a very good quality floor heater and the the proper use of heaters in the tanks with controllers and things of that nature I've been able to uh to handle it without tripping the fuse except maybe once or twice <laughs> so uh along the line of patience also has been the idea of researching and and uh I'm doing this more with the South American fish now and this is why I love to do these uh these fish profile videos. I know some of you really like the fish profiles, but the fish profiles are, are, are a little bit selfish, and I'll tell you why. They're, uh, they're for you. They're to help you with understanding a certain fish, but they're also for me because they force me to get into the literature, watch some videos, find out more about a fish, and uh, like the Salvini in the tank behind me, I mean, just finding out that after I had got her and that I happened to have a female and um, I found that out when I was starting to, to look into a Salvini profile video because of the markings on the, on the gills. You know, I've got, uh, there's a little spot at the bottom of the gills and uh, that's, that's a female and the females are usually more sought after and so I got lucky. On the Nicaraguas, I had a male and a female. Just luck of the draw. I don't think uh, James Largo at the cichlid check knew what he was sending me, and they just happened to be a male and female. Now, if I had been breeding them, I, it would have been a tremendous score. But after doing a little reading, the females, because of their color and temperament, are more desirable. And so you can see right there, she's, she's chasing other fish around right now. Look at big vieja. Nobody messes with that big vieja. Robert Egan, do you have any experience with German blue rams? I am trying them again, but um, one isn't eating. Uh, Robert, maybe get something that they can't resist. Maybe live brine shrimp. Blood worms might work. Maybe soaking them in something like a garlic guard before you feed them. That might help if there's a a pronounced sunken belly. You might have a, you might need to pull that fish out and treat them for parasites. But um, my experience with rams has not been that good, only because when I've had them, I've just had them in tanks that didn't really have the ideal parameters. I, I think they they need a certain kind of temperature, and and water parameters, and they're not one of those fish that have a very wide uh, range. Like some fish have a, a very wide range that they can uh, live within. And uh, I don't think rams, from my experience, 
I haven't found ramps to be that way. So you have to really, you know, research the ramp, you know, that fish and make sure that you're providing the right, the right hardness, the right pH, the right temp, you know, and, and, um, but for not eating my first, my, my first approach always is to try something that is very, very desirable. Like, like in the case of a ram, maybe a blood worm or, a uh, something soaked in garlic, uh, maybe some tube effects worms that have been soaked in garlic, or maybe uh, some live. If you get if you get your hands on some live brine from the local local fish store, maybe they sell some live brine shrimp, and that's usually hard to pass up. Uh, if that doesn't work, I'd put them immediately into a uh, into a parasite treatment. Put them in a in a tank by himself, and uh, hope that the other fish don't have it as well. Preferably a five or ten gallon tank that doesn't, uh, because otherwise you'll spend a lot of money on meds, and go and pick up like a little five gallon, little five gallon tank, and uh, put maybe half water from the aquarium, maybe a cup of substrate from the aquarium for beneficial bacteria, um, and it should be pretty much good to go. You know, usually if you put a cup or two of substrate in a five gallon or a ten gallon, it brings over enough beneficial bacteria. Just be sure if you add a little bit of tap water be sure that you treat the water first or else you'll kill off the beneficial bacteria and uh, good luck to you i mean that's when they stop eating that's a tough it's a tough one it's a tough one i've got a situation right now with a with a uh eye biter he's, he's got and i've had eye biters before that have a little bit of a belly that looks like their belly is sunken in like the way they hold their their fins and the way their body is shaped and they're like they're like razor thin they're very thin fish but my eye biter just seems to have a little bit of a sunken belly, but I've I've looked at his I've looked at his uh, his poops and they're they're normal, they're they're nice nicely formed normal poops, and uh, not stringy transparent long stringy transparent parasite poops, and he eats like a pig. So now, granted, he has a lot of trouble getting to the food because the other fish just overpower him and just knock him out of the way. So what I'm doing is I'm feeding, I'm feeding the fish to one side and then coaxing the eye biter over to the far left. And he's sort of learning now that that's where he gets fed. So now he hangs back. He hangs on the left side. Instead of coming over to the right and competing, he hangs over to the left and I, I drop a whole bunch of, of, of pellets on the right side of the tank. And then, quickly drop some right over his head so he gets a whole bunch of them and i think the way they're set up you know they're they're uh they're ambush predators they're designed to attack from above that's why they're i mean they're that's why they're so thin they they really can't even be seen i mean they come right over the fish and then drop down so they're designed to be a, a an ambush predator so when you're feeding any kind of pellets that that float or that are that that sink but are slow sinking, the fish that are are more comfortable eating from the top, they get all of it. So I have to make a, a special effort. And, and I had this happen with my one in, in California too. Big, beautiful blue eye biter. And he was just a monster, a beast. But, um, but his tummy was always a little bit, a little bit in compared to the, all the other fish, which were nice and fat. So, uh, and not fat, but, you know, rounded, well-shaped. So, uh, I don't know, like a, like a runway model. So, anyway, I hope that helps, Robert, and I hope your fish makes it. I hate uh, to watch fish waste away when they stop eating. It's kind of a, I mean, they just get weaker and weaker, and then they, it's not a, not a cool scene. Andrew Spark, detritus worms are harmless. I think I have detritus worms in all of my tanks, Andrew, and yes, they are harmless. You're welcome, Robert, and thank you for that. Thank you for that additional super chat. You didn't have to do it, but uh, thank you. Tips are appreciated. All right, so next point. And this point has become so important to me and uh, that as part of starting this new, new fish room, 
something I had never done before from scratch. And the, the key, probably the most key thing on all of it has been um, new, new friends, the new friends that I acquired in this project. Whether we're talking uh, locally here, you know, a friend of mine named John locally, uh, Denny, right, over in Oak Ridge, uh, Jerry Martin, uh, all of you here on the stream. I mean, John Wallace for sure, GP, uh, Kevin Green, uh, folks that have given me a, a fellow named Duane who sent me a, a power drill uh, so I could be better in my head. I did a video where I was assembling these stands and it was a plug in drill and he said it bothered him so much he sent me a, 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 a Milwaukee power drill. I mean, the friends that have stepped up and helped me along the way and given me tips. Uh, Joe over at Glass Cages, right? Uh, just a great guy. Uh, you know, I mean, just the friends that have, that have given me advice along the way uh, of, of things I should look for, whether it's about uh, the electrical setup, the plumbing, the heating and cooling, uh, my friends over at Aquarium Co-op, uh, certain vendors that have stepped up and wanted to help and sent me things, uh, JCMP with lights, Higer with lights and 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 equipment and and uh, people like that. Uh, James Largo, probably the best best friend the channel has, right? Taking on the role of sponsor and and sending me loads of fish and 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 food and 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 supplies and. Uh, just a great friend to the channel. And and so that, I think, probably the, the biggest highlight of the whole project of building out this fish room has been, uh, and I know I, there's a few of you I haven't mentioned, and I'm sorry I, if I haven't mentioned you, but just the friends, the friends that have stepped up and, and uh, been willing to give me advice and, and help me out in a variety of ways has been absolutely amazing. And uh, I'm really, really grateful for that. And, uh, and of course, the support of my family. You know, I tell my wife, you know, I think I'd like to go to, uh, to Tempe, Arizona. I mean, we're not, we're not rich. We don't have a, an enormous amount. Uh, we're not wealthy. And these trips cost a lot of money. I mean, if I showed you the bills from my trip to Aquashella, you, you, you would die how much that trip cost. Uh, but, and what does she say? I mean, she, she could say there's a thousand different answers that she could have said, including we can't afford that right now, or that's too expensive, or you better put that off. We haven't recovered from Aquashella yet or blah, blah. Her response is, um, that's a great idea. What a great, what a great thing to do. Go out there, give him a hand. Do get some footage. I think the people in your channel love those kind of videos. Yeah, what a great idea. When do you think you'd go? I mean, that to me is unbelievable. Unbelievable. So anyway. So friends and family and the tips I get from the community, you know, uh, IFG. IFG is always helping me out with a, with a tip here and there. And uh, it was great meeting uh, Jason Adams. Very easy to remember his name since my sons are Jason and Adam. Jason Adams. And uh, Rob, don't talk to him much between shows, but what a great guy from Flip Aquatics. I mean, just the incredible people. And uh, so anyway, Jerry Martin, one of my favorite folks. Uh, Denny, GP, I mean, all you folks. You folks are the best. So anyway, the people. That's been the best part of this build out, how you folks have sort of, you've done this sort of Amish barn raising with me where you've all sort of helped out. You've chipped in either with advice, support, by subbing, uh, with financial help. You, and and that's, that to me was is the best part of all of it. So, and for that, I, th I, I can't thank you enough. So, um, Two little bonus tips, uh, and two little bonus points I want to talk about. Uh, one, keeping it fun. 
always keeping it fun. And uh, that that's really important. If it ever starts to be, if this ever starts to become uh, a job or a chore, I'm out. I'm not going to, it's like, it's got, it's got to be fun. And I'm, I'm, I'm at that level now. Now adding this 300, that's going to be very interesting. And, uh, but I'm, I, I think I can, I can absorb that and still keep it in the fun zone. So keeping it fun, that's really, really important. And, uh, and, and probably the last point that has been another learning point for me is uh, zero tolerance, zero tolerance with, um, with trolls. People who, now it's one thing to give me advice. It's one thing to say, man, my experience with Salvini's is that they're just really mean. Watch out. Watch that fish. That, that's an honest attempt at giving me a heads up. I get it. But someone who, uh, you know, attacks you uh, personally, uh, goes after your, uh, you know, makes comments that maybe are, are they look like they're help, but they're actually just a, a, a jab that guy, boom, they're blocked. They're out. I no longer engage. I no longer spend time trying to explain my position. And they're gone. Gone. And that has given me such a relief. It's like a YouTube laxative. So, <laughs> so if you're going to get into YouTube and you're going to start a channel, don't engage people who you know initially are don't are, are not well intentioned they're 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 not they have malice in what they're saying and they're trying to get get you to if you walk away from somebody and your attention is on what's wrong with you you that person needs you need to look for another friend because uh your friend should be putting your attention on what's right and and what's good yeah and helping you out in areas and sure a good friend will actually intervene if something is obviously wrong but but you know what i'm talking about the ones that make you feel uh bad about yourself those aren't really friends so anyway the aquatic morning show is here what a cool name the aquatic morning show do you really have a show is there a show when is it and what do you talk about go ahead and do a get a free plug here so uh Christian wants to know how to uh, how to actually ad adapt the attitude of a fish. Now, I, I tell you, I tell you, it's it's really hard to because you get different kinds of fish within the same species, different attitudes. I'll give you an example. Um, over the years, I've had probably four Venusas. Two of them have been awesome, just big big puppy dogs. Two other ones I had to get rid of. They're absolute tears, and uh, we're just constantly, constantly beating beating people up. And um, so, the only solution for those fish was rehoming, was getting rid of them. And um, so I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I you know, you can you. You can try this and see if it works. Now, I'm going to try this with, with, the, um, with the OB. I'll show you the OB. Here. Let me go around and adjust this. I'll show you some of the other tanks while I'm on the subject.
There he is. So what I'm doing with that OB right now is I have him in this tank, and if you saw the video on the divider, you know that I've got, a, got him divided up. I've got the Zonatus on one side and the OB on the other. Beautiful OB called a Skittles. And hey, Jerry Martin, I saw that. Thank you, my friend. So it's a beautiful OB. I really don't want to get rid of him. So I put him in this in this 55. Maybe I'll mess around. I messed around a little bit with the decor in the 220. moved around some of the rocks, some of the plants. And so it's going to be a little bit different when I put him back in there. But if I put him back in there and he immediately starts to beat up the Bicolor 500, who has finally fully recovered from the beating he got from him, if he starts beating up the uh, Bicolor 500, I'm going to go ahead and uh, probably be forced to just take him over to the aquatic critter or maybe offer him to somebody here in, in, uh, in Tennessee. For some reason, I don't know why, I've talked about it before, I talked about it in the video, that little switch flipped in his head and he picked the one fish he could pick on and he just stayed on him relentlessly. Wouldn't mess with the bigger fish because they would have probably just tuned him up, but... He found one fish that he could get over on and just went to town on him. So I took him out, put him in that tank, and uh, I want to reintroduce him, but I will reintroduce him when I have a free morning and I can sit and just watch him. And if he, I'll keep that divider, I'll keep that divider up in that 55 and if he acts up, I'll pull him out again and then and then take him and then take him somewhere. So um, you can see the 220. It's doing great. Look at that trout. That trout is over seven inches, maybe eight. Eight inches. And coloring up like crazy. Mains, tails, fur, and fins. The Aquatic Morning Show is my show every, every weekday, 9 a.m. Central. There you go, folks. Mains, tails, fur, and fins. So you got a little bit of everything. The Aquatic Morning Show is my show every every week, every weekday. Wow, you are industrious. 9 a.m. Central. If you will send me a uh, a link to ben.o.cichlid, ben.o.cichlid, please send me a link. And we can share that link. Very nice. And thank you. Thank you so much for those uh, super chats. You didn't have to, you didn't have you didn't have to pay me, but I'm not going to turn you down, my friend. So um, let's take a look at the other tanks. Let me go around again. I've added some additional driftwood to this tank and I'm really liking, really liking the way it's looking. And the fish in this tank are thriving. 
as you can see, the little dwarf rainbows, the chocolate cichlids, the two uh, electric blue acaras just kind of hanging out there. But the two extra pieces of driftwood are is wood that I pulled off of that piece of slate that was made for me by Elite Cichlids. You see the, the chocolate cichlids, beautiful. I love the chocolate cichlids. They have those little trailers, a lot like the AC Heckli. They have those trailers off of the dorsal. Have the two red spotted severums in there. Amber Key, thank you, Amber Key. Very appreciated. Appreciate the support. So this is the tank that I talk about that I that I sit down and watch when I want some peace. <laughs> Even though the other tanks are relatively okay, they still have an occasional chase. This is the tank that's like, this is my Zen tank. <laughs> but I'm loving the use of wood. And of course, wood was something I never used before because with African cichlids, you don't necessarily want the tannins and the things that wood does to a tank. So... Um, now being able to use wood is just a lot of fun. For that 300 gallon, seven foot across tank, I'm gonna be, um, I've got a couple ideas on where to get the wood from. So I'm gonna be exploring some, I'll share them with you as I go. But you can see that tank is, uh, that tank is just a joy for me. And of course, take a look at the 90. I think one of the best things one of the best things I ever did was get rid of the troublemakers out of this tank. It has really changed the whole vibe of this tank. Even the red shoulder severum is swimming around a lot. You're not seeing them now because usually these lights get them rushing off to the back. The main thing that concerned me about having the uh, male Nicaragua in there is that. As I mentioned in that video, he was squaring off with my with my Jack Dempsey that I just absolutely love this Jack Dempsey, Thomasita. Hey, Thomasita. Come on. Anyway, she's a beautiful fish, and I didn't want that that Nicaragua beating up the Jack Dempsey. So that's what sort of forced my hand and sent me running off to Aquatic Critter with that bucket. I also had the, um, that smaller vieja who was just living a terrible life and probably would have done okay in the 400. I mean, I'm sorry, in the 300. But between now and the time I got that set up, there was just no place for me to put her that... Um, that I thought would actually be be sufficient for her to have a good life. So I ended up just keeping this one, this one vieja. The bigger of the two, beautiful vieja. And as you know, the uh, Salvini, the vieja, the Jack Dempsey, the more aggressive fish in this tank are gonna go into the 300 and I'll be adding the, the Zonatus the Vieja Zonatus, and hopefully in that much space, he'll be able to get along. Eventually, I'll add the Jack Dempsey's. I'm sorry, uh, the Green Terrors. At least one of the Green Terrors will be added as, as he puts on size. Right now, he probably just get eaten by, by the big Vieja. So that's the tank roundup.
All right. All right. Any questions, folks? Any questions you'd like to ask? Go ahead and ask them now. I am on the chat. Let me see here. All right, there's the chat. Now you can see what you're saying. Keep it decent. Elizabeth Wagner, my pH is way low all of a sudden. Well, first of all, if a pH has crashed, Elizabeth, you're, you're going to have some, um, some issues. Uh, that's very hard on fish. And... Um, I'd be curious why that happened. Why would you? Why would it crash like that? I mean, I know that over time, certain certain substrates might become exhausted. Like if you have um, if you have something like uh, ragonite or crushed coral, I know that I've heard that over time they can become exhausted. I also know that if you go too long between water changes, minerals can settle. They can settle, and minerals are what help to neutralize nitrates, right? Nitric acid is neutralized or buffered by the minerals, the magnesium, calcium. So if you went maybe too long between water changes, uh, or maybe started using an RO system. I mean, there's different different things that, but a, a pH shouldn't just suddenly drop, suddenly drop like that. I would suggest retesting, retesting, and and just make sure that you've got the numbers right before we go into a big, a lot of handling. I just added a bag of crushed coral to the sump of the 210 uh, to help with the KH, my KH is almost non-existent, and my pH tends to be in the in the um, high sevens. I'd like to get it closer to eight, but gradually. You know, you do this stuff gradually, right? So I put a a, a nice big mesh bag full of crushed coral in the sump, and let let's see, let's see if gradually that makes a difference. You might do the same thing. I was able to pick up a nice, you know, a, a nice bag of crushed coral from the aquatic critter for four dollars. I was shocked. I, usually, crushed coral is very expensive, so um, maybe a little bit of crushed coral might 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 help. But I w I would, uh, yeah, seven eight to seven two is that's a crash. That's a crash. I think each. Isn't each increment like a hundred times difference? Is it a hundred times from seven to eight or from point two to point three? Is that a hundred times difference? I heard that it's a it's a massive scale. It's a it's a it's a logarithmic, is that what they call it? A logarithmic scale where each number is like a hundred times more than the one before. So a seven eight to a seven two is a big that's a big change. That's a big change. Now, how are the fish looking? If the fish are looking great, they're eating, they're colorful, they're active, uh, you might be uh, concerning yourself. I mean, maybe they're, it's within their tolerance level. I don't know. But I do know that a, a rapid pH change is very hard on fish. And... When you do water changes, sometimes the pH change can be more dangerous than even the uh, temperature change. You know, the, the 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 rapid shift in pH. This is why some people go, okay, look, when you do a water change, if you have sensitive fish, do smaller water changes more frequently, and 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 trickle, allow the water to go into the tank from the tap on a trickle. A little bit more than a trickle, but not as a hard full blast flow, and that that's a little bit more gradual, less the fish, 
like if you had, let's say, discus or something sensitive like that. So um, I'm going to be doing a couple review videos, by the way, and, and I, I mentioned this, I think I mentioned this last week. I was able to get the divider video out, and I've got this thing. I thank Richard through Pawn Guru. Pawn Guru. Thank you, Pawn Guru. He gave my name to this company, and they sent me an APS 300 lithium ion battery, like the size of a car battery, and um, 300 watt AC out, 500 watt surge, has a DC out, 12 volt, has Three USB and a USB C outputs, a 12 volt car port. So I'm going to be testing this and uh, letting you know what I think as a backup. I mean, even if it just ran air pumps during a blackout, uh, during a power outage, if it ran, if it ran your air pumps, that could save your fish, since it's the drop in oxygen that usually kills them during a blackout. So, uh, could be interesting. Could be interesting. All right. Dave Hibbert. Hey, Dave. I'm setting up a 150 for Frontosas. Any advice where to get Blue Zaires or any other type of exotic Frontosas? Man, there are some beautiful Frontosas out there. Uh, Blues, I mean, check check with the Sigler Shack. He might have some. He might have some uh, uh, some blues, maybe some spiders, maybe some. Um, I mean, check with him. Otherwise, uh, I've I've been a little bit, you know, out of touch. I mean, having working so much with with James, I've been out of touch. But also, I mean, you get fifteen percent off, so that's also a good thing. But. I mean, I don't, I, I, really, I, I really, if you know, if someone is on here and you know where you can get some, some, uh, some frontosa, some blue ones, go ahead and let them know because I'm not, I, I, I'm kind of out of that loop a little bit, you know, working with a sponsor. I mean, I know that my local fish store has them, had a real nice selection of, uh, of frontosas. And if James doesn't have them, maybe you can call the aquatic critter and, and they might ship. I mean, I don't know. Maybe they'll ship them to you. But anyone else that knows, let me know. You know what I do? T tables two zero zero seven. Buy what is called a gang valve. You can get them on um, eBay or YouTube. I'm doing it. I'm doing it on this tank here, and what it does is it turns the two into one. So you run the two tubes into the gang valve, and then and then you use uh, what would normally be the the input of one going into two. You just simply flip it, and you can go. So with the gang valve, you can turn the two into one, and that way you take advantage of of the full, the full uh, power of the pump. Otherwise, you're wasting, you're wasting uh, some of your energy there because it'll probably you're going to get resistance from, you're going to get resistance on the line that has the the hose on it, right? The tube, so it's going to it's going to blow more air out of the one that's 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 uh has no tube on it so it's sort of defeating the purpose you want you want those bubbles so uh, yeah get a little gang valve it costs such a few bucks you can get them on amazon and uh, and just go 1 to 2 just buy the one that is 1 1 and 2 it's designed to take one you know one tube from the pump and turn it into two outlets but you can reverse it and just go the two from the from the pump and then one into the tank and that's that's what i got going on here i got a, a two outlet pump going to that one giant disc which i don't know if i've ever shown you recently i've got this big disc in the back corner that's bubbling over here i've got to pull up on the tube every now and then because the the geos cover it they cover it with substrate so it doesn't it doesn't it all the it's blocked, so I got to lift it up and shake it off every now and then, or else it doesn't work. So, uh, 
All right, let's see here. Thank you, Mains, Tails, Fur, and Fins. I appreciate that. And what I'll do, I'll check out your channel. I'll follow that link. I'll check out your channel. And uh, if I like channels, I definitely promote them. Robert Egan, my pH is in the high sevens. Are you, uh, what kind of fish are you keeping, Robert? Are you African cichlids? And if so, I mean, how do they look? Do they look good? Then, then, then that high seven is good. And, you know, seven, eight, seven, seven, eight, one, eight, two. I mean, those are all good African cichlids. I mean, they Jenny Delgado, is it possible to travel with fish in a generator in a bucket? I When I have long drives, Jenny, and I'm carrying fish, I have uh, lithium battery air pumps with an air stone. So I drop that in the bucket. Makes the traveling a lot less stressful for the fish. The only concern I'd have is... Uh, the only concern I have is would be temperature. Like if you're going through an area, you know, you're going through an area where your car is going to get really hot or you're running the air conditioner or, you know, just watch, watch the temperature. And um, they do have plugins for cars that you can then use an AC plug and you could conceivably plug a little flat, you know, like a little 10 watt, 15 watt flat heater. They have those little flat heaters like I have in here. Against the wall of this tank, I have a flat heater, little aquion things, like a little, like a wafer. And um, if you have those adapters for your car, for your like like a cigarette lighter, right? Put the adapter in, plug in, and you can run your you can run your a heater in there too. If you could take a long trip and it's gonna get cold, for example. So let's see here. So yeah, somebody concurred there. On the crushed coral. Any other questions, I'll be happy to answer. Amber, I thank you for those super chats. And mines, tails, furs, and fins, thank you for those super chats. And uh, T Tables 2007, I got the Beware of Cichlid sign from one of my sons. I think he picked it up on either Amazon or eBay, if you just go there and, oh, wait a minute, you know what? Go to my Amazon store. Go to amazon.com slash shop slash Ben Ochart. I think I have it at my Amazon store, the Beware of Cichlids. And you can custom make it to anything. You can have it Beware of Oscar, Beware of Betta Fish, Beware of, you can customize it. But my son, out of the blue, when we first moved here, he shows up with this sign, and I just thought it was hilarious. Let's see here. Robert Egan, what do you feed your OBs? I feed my fish a mix, a blend of food that has uh, extreme piscine energetics and uh, primarily, you know, pellets, uh, those are the two main foods I'm using now. I'm using, um, oh, by the way, let me show you something. I made a friend at Aquashella, a guy named Klaus from the company Sarah. Sarah is a very high-end German company. They do a lot of research on food. And by that, what I mean is they'll feed certain foods, certain nutrients to fish, and then they'll do uh, tish tissue samples. And they're very scientific and uh, very thorough. Here, I'll show you here. So I told Klaus, I said, hey, Klaus, uh, I've heard great things about your food. I'd like, to, I'd like to talk to one of you in an interview about why, why you think your food is good. I'm also going to do the same thing with Extreme. I met some folks from Extreme, and they've agreed to do an interview with me. 
and Klaus or one of his associates in Germany is going to do a, uh, a Zoom call with me that I'm going to record, and we'll find out all about that. I was very surprised to see Sarah Products at Petco. I was also surprised to see uh, Shisei. Shisei and Sarah, those, I consider those high-end brands. Petco had both of them, both of them at, at uh, but check this out. Klaus sent me like the mother load of Sarah food. Now, if you're familiar with Sarah food, you know a little vial, this much, is probably $15, $20. Just a little vial of food. Small, half the size of my coffee cup. It's going to cost you $20 to $30. So, anyway, this is what I mean by making friends and people who back you up. I mean, this is a heavy box, and I'm very anxious to open it and get in there and start reading ingredients. And I'm going to share with you what my thoughts are on Sarah food. And I'm going to compare it. I'm going to compare it to Extreme, probably to North Fin and Piscine. We're going to look at protein levels, fillers, ash, and uh, colors, dyes, wheat products, soy. We're going to see. We're going to see. We'll do a side-by-side. I'll do an interview with both of them. If you remember, I did an interview with the uh, owner of Piscine, five-part series. Love talking with him. Great quality product. But um, anyway, so watch for that. Watch for the, the Sarah Extreme interview and side-by-side -side comparisons. And I thank you, Klaus. I think he's in Germany now, but... I thank you, Klaus, for getting that box over to me. So um, let's see here. All right. So if you don't have any other pressing questions, Sarah is a popular food used here in Southern Africa. Yeah, they're 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 they were they had a nice presence at Aquashella and they they've been a very res respected brand for quite a while and some people have shied away from them because they're not cheap they're not cheap you can probably buy 2 pounds of tetramin for what you'd pay for just a few ounces of of sera but the point that was made by the uh, owner of Piscine Energetics is that you can probably feed a lot less of a high quality food and you know and and tax the digestive system a lot less and get a lot more nutrients now we know people that keep african cichlids and and the problems with with, with bloat and things of that nature if you can run a high quality food through that intestinal tract that they're going to minimize the effort and getting it through and maximize the, the, the content, you know, the quality of the, of the food. That's an important thing. So Piscine ended up uh, getting accounts with large uh, aquariums, large like, like, you know, county aquariums, like city aquariums, things like that. Um, and it seemed initially more expensive, but then when they realized that they could feed a fourth or a third of what they were feeding before and and have fish that were actually healthier, stronger, and more colorful with a third of the feeding, they realized it was actually less money than what they were using before because the food they were using before had ash and, and, and wheat and all this other stuff that the fish is using more energy to get it through its system than it's actually pulling in nutrients, Right? It's like that old idea of a celery stick or something, taking more energy to eat it than, the, than it actually provides the body. But So at any rate, interesting stuff, very interesting stuff. So, um, when is the yes, Joe? All righty. Aquarium poop? <laughs> a lot of dust. Maybe, 
I mean, there is a lot of, I mean, like substrate and stuff. I mean, there's, there's, in the shipping, there's a lot of, it could have been a lot, of, a lot of shaking around. I don't know. When I open these up, I'll look for, I'll see if there's a lot of dust in there. And um, also, that can also be a product of, the, of, of not using uh, very strong binders. Because the wheats and the soys and, and you know, starches and things like that are binding agents, but those binding agents are not necessarily good for your fish. So maybe they cut back on the binders to improve the quality, and because of that, the food doesn't quite hold together as well in shipping as maybe other foods. I don't know. It's a trade-off. It's probably a good thing also, though, when you drop it in the tank, it's going to become immediately very moist. So it's not like your fish is going to be holding some hard pellets in their mouth. They're going to immediately become soft and easy to swallow. So I don't know. A lot of, a lot of moving parts when we talk about food, uh, a topic I, I seem to like a lot. All righty. We are actually almost a half hour over, which is a record for me. And uh, I don't know what the heck is going on, but... <laughs> Obviously, I got carried away. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody, for uh, for sitting in, spending some Saturday with me. I really appreciate it. You folks are the best. You do rock. I mean that when I say it. Thank you to my wonderful moderators. And uh, a big shout-out, of course, to uh, – big shout-out to those of you who, who support the channel. In particular, of course, my wonderful uh, – and growing group of Patreon members, you are the best. Patreon memberships go from $3 on up. And uh, you do get behind-the-scenes videos, uh, pre-releases, sneak peeks, and uh, things that are just for the Patreon members. So thank you to those who have done that. And a big shout-out, of course, to, uh, to James over in Arizona. Hope to see you soon, my friend. And I think with that... We will go ahead and wrap it up. Thank you, everybody. You are the best. And I'm sorry I ran over, but uh, hey, I looked up and there it was. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye, everybody.